Yo guys, Mike for Sim Racing 604, and these are my Fanatec CSL Elite V2 pedals, the follow-up to Fanatec's very popular CSL Elite pedals. There's been many improvements made versus the outgoing version, and other than a cockpit, perhaps pedals are the most important piece of sim gear you have. And so today I'm going to talk about whether these CSL Elite V2 pedals are worth the upgrade. All right, so as you can see, I have the CSL Elite V2 pedals out of box here and sitting in front of me. So initial visual impressions, well, nothing spectacular, nothing so beautiful. I have the uh, Acetec Forte pedals and I think those are absolutely gorgeous. These ones are nice to look at. They're not offensive in any way. They're not flashy like the Acetecs, but you know, a good all around design. It's got kind of a texture to all the metal finish here. This is not uh, polished in any way. It's it's kind of a rough, well not rough, but it's, it's it's got a texture to it for sure. And uh, we'll spin it around here, have a look at kind of the rear of the pedals, give it a bit of angle, so hopefully that helps. Uh, of course we have clutch brake accelerator, all different weights, and the accelerator I can move with one finger no problem. The clutch is a little bit more stiff. Same basic mechanics, there's no um, different stages to this clutch travel, unlike the Fanatec, uh, what are they, the V3 inverted pedals that I have, uh, which have uh, non-linear travel. This is an absolute linear travel um, for the clutch, and then the brake, very, very stiff. It's a load cell brake pedal. And then it's got these rubber stoppers and a spring behind, and it does include uh, the kit when you buy the C when you buy the CSL Elite V2 pedals, it does include a kit to adjust the strength of these pedals. So right now they're set at 65 and they can be adjusted all the way up to 85. And that 85 is more for people looking for a much stiffer brake travel. If you've got this mounted, hard mounted on a rig, 85 might be more appropriate, or you can keep it at the default 65. And I'm gonna do my testing initially on the 65 and then we will move on from there. So this does have rubber feet on the bottom. So um, I don't know if that's actually intended to be used on a floor or not. Uh, these seem pretty hardcore to be used on a floor, but uh, it does have rubber feet just the same. Um, but broadly speaking, you would probably most commonly find these hard mounted to a pedal plate or some sort of pedal deck on a rig. So it's got two holes in each of the pedals uh, at the top for easy access to uh, mounting bolts. And then if we spin around here to the front, well actually it might be easiest to look at the side. So there's a little channel down in there. Uh, that's where you would put the front bolt and it just kind of slides down in there with a washer and then drops through your pedal deck and then you put a nut on the other side and that's how you mount it. Fanatec, uh, by the way, I don't think that's the greatest system. Um, it's something that a lot of manufacturers struggle with, but I'll circle back to that. Uh, but Fanatec has gone a little bit further and put these removable little um, caps, I guess you would call them, here. And those are for access for putting like a nut driver or an Allen key down there to turn the bolt. So a little bit of thought went into that for uh, ease of install, which I like. Uh, but generally, still so few manufacturers seem to understand that pedals are really difficult to install and uh, unfortunately th the back is good i can handle the back style with you know just drop in a bolt and put a nut on the other side but i don't know why these have to be inaccessible It'd be nice if this plate came off and you could just install it that way or you know if this instead of being a cap that you remove to drop a nut driver down in there can we not just put the bolt down there Anyway, I guess not. So, um, something else you'll notice about these pedals is they are fixed right now, but they don't need to stay that way. So I understand, I haven't done this yet, but uh, I understand this strip comes out somehow. I thought this is initially just a rubber strip to sort of uh, keep your feet from sliding around, but it actually comes out. And then as you can see, we have access to these bolts. So if you undo those, and then at the rear, there are these bolts. This is actually one long uh, threaded rod. Actually, I shouldn't say bolt. This is one long threaded rod, and then below it, there's another long threaded rod. And so if you undo these end pieces, you can actually remove the pedals. You can shorten these spacers here and bring the pedals 
across um, and, and get them set in a different position. So I'm actually going to do that at some point. Initially, I'm going to test these in game using the default uh, weight to the brake and also using the default spacing of the pedals. But uh, then I want to get it on the bench and adjust the spacing to more like my Husingfeld sprints. Um, but might be easier to see from the back. But you can kind of see the bolts there. And then uh, those are the ones we're going to take out to adjust uh, the pedals to our liking. So... Initial impressions, very good. Um, is there anything else? I feel like I'm forgetting to mention something. Oh yeah, um, this control box here, obviously all the pedals wire back to it. And then this either goes RJ12 over to your uh, Fanatec uh, um, uh, wheelbase, or it can go USB direct to your computer. So uh, a couple of connectivity options there. But broadly speaking, that is your Fanatec CSL Elite V2 pedals. So I'm going to go ahead and get these into a set of Corsa and start turning some laps and I'll give my impressions. Then we'll come back to the bench. I'll do my adjustments, get these sitting more like my Houston Velt sprints, and then we'll test again. Let's do that now. Okay, so here we are testing out the CSL Elite V2 pedals in a set of Corsa. If everything goes to plan, you should have a pedal cam on your screen all right about now. If not, I have failed you as a YouTuber. So you are on board the Formula, or excuse me, the RSS Supreme, I believe it's called, from Racing Studio. It's a super Formula car. And, um,. Yeah, it's not a particularly difficult car to drive, but things happen very fast. You need to be very responsive on your pedals and on your steering inputs, apparently. So we'll start to push a bit once we have some temperature in the tires. And it's fairly easy to uh, lose traction in this thing, especially under braking. So if I can modulate that brake pedal and get just a little bit of lockup, but nothing too severe. I would consider that a win for these pedals. And if I can get uh, on the throttle safely without sending the back end around, then I would likewise think that's a victory for the accelerator pedal. But we'll see what happens. So you probably heard or saw a little bit of that lockup there. That's exactly what I want. Can I find that very limit of traction with these pedals? And so far, it is done right. Or it is uh, performed well. I also have a pedal meter in the center of your screen there. Probably bears no explanation, but red is my brake pedal, green is my accelerator pedal, and everything is default now. I've got it on the 65 kilogram setting and in the default position. So what I'm going to do after this session is start to configure it to my liking. So I'm going to go uh, change the distance between the pedals to match a set of pedals that I really like. And then we'll try it with the clutch. Try a little heel toe braking, uh, heel toe, yeah, braking, what am I saying? Shifting, there we go. So, so far so good with these pedals and honestly they feel pretty darn good. I would even go so far as to say these feel um, well above their price point. The weight on that brake is phenomenal. Again, this is default setting. So the 65 kilogram setting plus 50% in the Fanatec software. And they feel great. This is pretty much the perfect weight for me. I've had a chance to get used to these a bit because these are the pedals I used for my RSS Classic Endurance pack review. 
So I was driving those old school endurance cars with these pedals. Got used to them and they performed really well for me. And likewise with this RSS Supreme. They seem to handle whatever I can throw at them. So I mean, you know, we consider these kind of a mid-range set of pedals. Yet they perform like almost as good as the best set of pedals I have. I my reference point is the Husikvelt Sprints. And I, I really like the feel. I mean, are they as good as the sprints? I would have to do a side-by-side -side comparison, but I have to admit, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. It's not like I'm desperate to get back to my sprints after this. Really, really impressed with what I'm feeling with these CSL Elite V2s. Perfect weight to both the accelerator and the brake, in my opinion. I'm able to get this RSS Supreme around safely, which is impressive unto itself. Yeah, I, I gotta say, I love these. I really do. My goodness. I'm not the best driver in the world, that's for sure. But whatever I throw at these pedals, again, they just seem to, to take it and uh, provide an excellent level of resistance and allow me to do what I want to do with the car. And just when you feel the car start to lock up, you can back off just slightly Get that threshold breaking nailed. Which is, of course, exactly what you want. So, these to me are punching well above their weight. Remains to be seen what it'll feel like once they get the clutch involved and do heel toe shifting. But, I mean, as you know, a review of it as a two pedal set, I mean, fantastic. Really great. All right, we'll finish this lap and that'll do it. But again, as a two pedal set, phenomenal. Outstanding, well above their weight. There we go, crossing the finish line. And yeah, so far so good with the CSL Elite V2 pedals. All right, so hopefully I conveyed that properly. Um, as a two pedal set, these things felt phenomenal. Really outstanding, I was, I was impressed. I thought they would be good. I didn't think they'd be quite that good. They feel really, really great. Um, but the spacing was a little bit off. I did try just on my own. I, I tried some uh, heel toe shifting and there was just a bit much of a gap. This is the original gap, let's see between the pedals. They used to all be spaced by this distance, which is 65-ish mil or two and a half inches roughly. And that was also the space between the accelerator and the brake. So that caused me a little bit of issue. I could have heel toe shifted with it, but not quite. So I decided to move it in and just basically moved it in one step. So um, don't know if you can see that on the bottom of these pedals or not, but uh, I did move it in uh, by one hole. There's one blank hole here now, and I just moved the two, uh, two mounting uh, bolts over by one which also meant I had to make an adjustment at the back. So all told, um, the moving of, of the accelerator pedal, it took about 10 minutes and, um, that's not a fantastic time, but I'm pretty sure I could cut that down to five the second time around. Like it wasn't particularly difficult. I just kind of had to understand what Fanatec was going for. And, um, yeah, now that I understand it, it's, it's fairly easy. So, yeah, um, just basically you remove the cable, you undo the bolts at the back, the nuts rather. Of course, undo, you have to take this rubber strip out, then undo the bolts of the pedal you're trying to move, and then you can move it wherever. I will say it's a 
it's a decent system, but um, I don't know why these aren't just channels. It would have made things a lot easier for uh, customization, but they didn't go with channels. They went with basically slots. So yeah, this should be a better gap now and I can do my heel toe shifting. Um, I did want to mention also that this does include all the necessary cables and, for connection and uh, also the tools to do this moving. There's no included mounting bolts. You know, it's a pet peeve of mine, but uh, anyway, uh, no mounting bolts, but there are the tools necessary uh, to get this adjusted. And there's also the different weights. And I was gonna show you, since we're on the bench here, I was gonna show you how we can adjust the uh, the weight of the brake. Uh, per my testing, the brake feels perfect to me, but if you did wanna make it heavier, I'll, it's gonna be difficult for me to do this backwards, but um, basically the two orange plastic caps that come in the box, simply put those on and sorry I have to do this towards me but you just kind of squeeze and pull and then you can take this entire stack out and uh, what you're looking at with this stack is uh, three rubber spacers and a spring these are noted as 65 there's also 75s and 85s in the box and then uh, there's two springs, a blue one and a black one. So depending on which weight, which specific weight you wanna go with, uh, you can make adjustments that way because this stack just comes apart. And then you can just change out the spacers for the ones you want. And then of course the spring would work the same. Just take that end off, take the spring out and that's it. And then it goes back in, hopefully just as easy as it came out. Pause for dramatic effect here. Et voila. So just like that, uh, you could have a different weight to your brake. But uh, per my testing, I mean, the weight feels perfect. I love it. So I'm not going to make any adjustments to that. Um, but yeah, everything's ready to go. Um, yeah, I'm going to try some heel toe testing now. And then we'll get back to the bench for my final thoughts. All right. So time to test out this clutch pedal. Obviously here at Valley Lunga, I am driving the RSS Formula 79. And uh, I'll try and keep this one a little shorter since I uh, went long with my accelerator and brake section. And yes, I did just reach for sixth gear there. Boy, would I have been shocked and so would my transmission. All right, so impressions on the clutch pedal. Well, not quite on the level of uh, impressed as I was, not on the same level of uh, being impressed as I was with the accelerator and brake, both of which of course still feel fantastic. But yeah, the clutch, I mean, it's got that linear travel. The best, probably the best clutch pedal I've ever used was also by Fanatec. And that is on their V3 inverted pedals. I love, love, love that clutch. And this is not that. It's got that linear travel. Doesn't get uh, progressively, uh, you know, more easy as you go past a certain bite point. Whoa. But that said, the weight is pretty good. I'm not having any troubles with it. It's certainly enough that I can feel it in my foot even with boots on. And it's also not so difficult that I'm having trouble pushing it whatsoever. I think if I was serious about using a clutch, I'd probably pull the clutch pedal in a little bit. It's a bit of a reach for my feet, but the accelerator and brake are perfectly spaced for my feet. So even though uh, I didn't like the fact that I had to use increments to adjust the travel instead of uh, slots where I could just uh, have set it millimeter perfect. I did imagine I did eventually get the uh, distance right, or I did luckily get the distance right, I should say. Whoa! But yeah, the uh, the clutch pedal just kind of feels average, which is kind of disappointing. because I'm so in love with the accelerator and brake. And yeah, it's just kind of an average feeling clutch, unfortunately. 
Now, of course, you could make the argument, whoops, first gear, you could make the argument that, uh, you know, this is a mid-level wheel, or mid-level set of pedals, rather, and you're not going to get, you know, an exceptional feeling clutch. And I think that's probably what the marketing answer would be. And, and I don't disagree. I, I'm not expecting perfection. I'm not expecting it to feel like the Heusenfeld Spritz. I'm not expecting it to feel even as good as the uh, V3 Inverteds, which are typically twice the price on Fanatec's website. So it's not going to be that. I have no illusions of that. But at the same time, again, next to that accelerator and brake, which are just phenomenal, the brake pedal just kind of feels average. But the weight is good. The weight is good, I would say. So you're not going to be disappointed by it for sure. I just think I'm spoiled because I've tried slightly more fancy, slightly more luxurious clutch pedals. Alright, so we'll finish this lap and that'll do it. But uh, overall, hopefully I've given the impression that I absolutely love these pedals. They perform really nicely. And you'll hear about that in my summary and my final thoughts. And even though I've spent most of this section complaining about the feel of the clutch, I do like it. It's average. It's by no means a bad feeling clutch. It just doesn't quite blow my mind the way I had hoped. But the weight is good. I think you would like it too if you're upgrading. Couple more corners to go here. And I almost had zero more corners. And just a friendly reminder, I don't drive this car enough, but this Lotus 79 is fantastic from Race Sim Studio. Get a chance, try it. All right, that's gonna do it. Let's go on to final thoughts. Okay guys, so time for my final thoughts on the Fanatec CSL Elite V2 pedals. And I'm, I'm sure you can guess where this is going, but uh, I will do uh, the good, things I like, uh, neutral, things I'm okay with, and of course bad, things I don't like. And start off with the good, and the first thing is the feel and operation of these pedals is fantastic. It, it, it really is. And, um, you know, I own more expensive pedals, but this is right there with them in terms of feel, especially with these two pedals. Yes, it would be nice to have nonlinear travel on the clutch, but other than that, um, they feel fantastic. And even the weight of this clutch, the weight is perfect. It's just kind of strange with the linear travel, but Otherwise, I, I mean, I think these feel fantastic. They feel way, way better than I expected a $300 set of pedals would. And uh, yeah, I just can't, can't say enough good things. I actually love these pedals. And then, of course, that ties to value. I think at $300, bucks, um, it's a good deal. Now, I understand that, you know, my sense of what's a good deal what's not a good deal isn't the same as everybody's but i think as an upgrade you know for 300 dollars, if you're using a sort of entry to beginner level pedal and want to step up and you have 300 dollars, this is a very good investment um, other than probably your cockpit i can't name many more important parts than the pedals and these perform phenomenally they're really great, and so at $300, I think they're a great value. And the next thing is the mechanical adjustment of the brake. Um, you know, the weight of the brake is so, so important to, I wouldn't say success in sim racing, but certainly enjoyment, um, and then to some degree, performance. So to have mechanical adjustments as well as the software adjustments um, is a big thing. So they include different weighted rubber stoppers, they include a different spring, and then to be able to swap them out in a matter of seconds is is awesome. So well done to Fanatec on that. And then flipping it around, um, these rubber uh, pads on the pedals. What a simple but effective concept. I was looking at, I own a ridiculous amount of pedals at this point, and every single one of them is metal or plastic. I don't have rubber ones. And I was thinking, why is that? Why not? There's always the debate of, you know, these pedals are too hard. Uh, I have to wear shoes with them. I can't wear them with socks. Well, this is a simple workaround. I mean, I'm sure Fanatec pays pennies for these rubber pads. Uh, 
more with research and development. I get it. But um, I'm sure these don't cost very much to um, Fanatec. And they're a great idea. They work to perfection. They make it so that um, they're grippy when you have shoes on and they're also grippy and soft. Well, not soft, but a little bit softer when you have socks on. So such a simple idea. And I think even beyond the CSL Elite V2 pedals, I think Fanatec, I think Moza, I think Husingvelt, everyone should start making rubber sort of coverings for their pedal faces because I think it's a great idea and I don't know why there aren't more manufacturers doing it I think it's a great idea and also they include the adjustment tools so I made the adjustment to bring the accelerator and brake close together and the allen keys and the wrench were included it's a simple thing I say this in almost every one of my hardware review videos that hardware shouldn't be something you have to go looking for i think for the small amount of money it costs um, for a manufacturer to just throw those in the box uh, they don't have to be great just simple allen keys and bolts um, in this case the bolts and we'll talk more about this in a different section but uh having the hardware tools required uh, or having the tools required rather to uh to make those adjustments is is definitely a good thing and that goes along with the um, um, installation booklet and the video to support these pedals uh, it was great that I could just look up how to make these adjustments very simply is a great video they put together and a simple instruction manual was included in the box as well and then finally connectivity options you can connect either via the RJ12 uh, connection straight to a Fanatec wheelbase or if you want to use them as standalone you can use both uh, excuse me you can use usb and both those cables were included in the box which is tremendous um, so there's different connectivity options if you run fanatec already as far as a wheelbase you can connect these direct and not have to worry about uh, using up an extra usb port or if you own a different wheelbase or just for whatever reason prefer to use usb standalone you can do that so that's really good and moving now to the neutral things i'm just okay with first thing is the styling i mean yeah these these aren't I, I'm spoiled because I have the Asetek Forte pedals and they, they're absolutely gorgeous and I love just staring at them and I love when they're on my rig. Uh, these ones, not as much. I mean, they look fine. There's nothing offensive in the design, um, but they're just kind of neutral and uh, it's something hardware manufacturers, I always encourage them to get into is add a little bit of color, add a little bit of style somewhere. Again, this is not an offensive design. It's going to go with just about everything on the market, which I'm sure is what Fanatec was going for, but I also like to see a little bit of style. I always say um that we're, we're we're car people we we like seeing you know tapered noses and we like seeing flowing lines and bright colors and things like that so i wish more hardware manufacturers were a little bit more aggressive on their design even if it's parts you could swap out and go to a, go back to a more conservative design it'd be nice to have the option to have something that looks a little bit more flashy than this and then adjustability we have to talk about adjustability um they're very close. Like I think having the uh, mechanical brake adjustment is, is tremendous. And then having the ability to move the pedals um, laterally is great. Problem is you can only do it in steps of about one inch. So um, I don't know why they didn't just go with a channel here and then include some different size spacers so you could get it, you know, millimeter perfect. It would have been pretty easy, I think. Um, I. I yeah, I, I, I'm not a, a hardware manufacturer. Maybe I'm missing something. But to me, having the ability, having this be a channel and having the ability to make it millimeter perfect uh, is is the way to go. It is something I have with my Husingfelds and it's something I miss here. By no means is that a deal breaker, but it's something that I would have liked to have seen with these pedals. And then we have to, of course, talk about the bad things I don't like about these pedals. Um, the first thing is that uh, these front mounting holes are just... a a pain in the butt yeah they work well once you get them on and granted I understand people don't often change pedal sets like especially compared to me I own just way too many pedals so I'm always flipping them out when I feel like it and so it's not that big of a deal to most people most people but having this you know having to put a bolt there and try and get that mounted on the rig is a real pain in the butt the back is so simple if they could have done a similar thing here have this piece extend out slightly beyond like right here and then we could just drop a bolt down spot on it would be easy but as it stands it's buried you have to pop this cap out to get a tool down to it's too much and it's something hardware manufacturers seem to struggle with and uh 
yeah, I, I, I think a better system is needed. Again, most people don't swap pedals as much as me. I just don't like these front bolts. The, the back bolts are great, but the front bolts, I mean, yeah, it, it's good because you don't see the bolt head. I get it. But if these were, instead of being caps, if they were recessed and then you had a rubber cap that went on there and in that recession, you could drop your bolt in, you would get the exact same effect. No, no additional bolt heads visible. And, um, yeah, it, it would just be cleaner, easier on everyone. So please, for any hardware ma manufacturer listening to this, this is what the people want. <laughs> we want it as easy as possible to get the our new fancy set of pedals onto our rig. And lastly, um, and related to that, is the bolts are not included for mounting this. It, it costs somebody at the pl uh, it costs the manufacturer pennies to include something like that. You know, uh, four bolts four washers, four lock nuts, done. I mean, you're talking, I'm sure, under $1 <laughs> for them to purchase that and a baggie to put it in and ship it. Um, I get it. Over the course of many thousands of units, it adds up with shipping, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, uh, for someone to have to go maybe to the hardware store, have to go digging through their tool chest to try and find the correct bolts is a pain in the butt. They even spec what type of bolts you're supposed to use on this thing, but they don't include them. If you've gone as far as to know the specs of the bolt, you could go just a step further and purchase those for the customer and throw them in the box. All right, mounting rant over. Um, with that stuff out of the way, I have to say I absolutely love these pedals and they far exceed my expectations i knew they would be good but i didn't think they would be this good and just a really tremendous set of pedals and i look forward to using them for a long time to come um they don't have the style of my Asatex and they don't have the clutch feel of my Husink Velts, but in terms of the performance of, of the accelerator and brake, it's as good as any pedal I've ever tested. And at the $300 price point, I think there's a lot of value there. So thank you to Fanatec for sending me these for review. And uh, like I said, I look forward to lots more use out of these uh, CSL Elite V2 pedals in the future. Thank you guys for watching.